Welcome to Catholic Views. I'm your host, Renee Kranz. On today's show, we will have Earl Markley in the uh, studio. He is, he's, many of you have seen Earl. He's the guy who is um, bringing around the Eucharistic Miracles exhibit, which he has brought to many parishes in the diocese and in the region, actually. Um, he does great work with that and a lot of work in the pro-life area as well. So we brought Earl in to talk about that. He is like the sweetest guy you'll ever meet. Uh, I actually told, I think it was Elise or Brianna in our office, like, you just kind of want him to be your grandpa. I didn't tell Earl that, but he's going to find out. <laughs> he's super sweet. So I hope you'll stick around for that and hear his testimony and what he does. First, we have Dr. Chris Bergwald in the studio. He's never not in the studio, is he? Mm, oh, during Bi- COVID. Uh, There's a time yeah. or two. Yeah. Biblical Bites with Dr. B first. So we are going to dive right in. Renee, it is the fifth Sunday in ordinary time. In my head, I wrote. Yes, oh no, I did it right. I thought it was, I was seeing fourth. I wrote fifth down too. Yeah. So, um, we're gonna dive right in. Uh, the gospel reading is from Mark, verses one, chapter one, verses twenty nine through thirty nine. Okay. I'm gonna read it mildly, quick reading. Okay. Not disrespectful, but right. mildly quick. Uh, and I want to know your impression. Okay, so I better listen. You better. You better okay. listen for, for, <laughs> for once. Okay. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn... He left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. Impressions. Well, the first thing I am thinking of is that God can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Like he's He's going to... He'll heal, he'll drive out demons, what, whatever is his will. And uh, the thing that I, I, I kind of I think I know where he might be going here, mm-hmm. maybe, is the time that Jesus takes to go pray. Um, maybe you're not going there. But that's the always the thing that stands out to me, too, because even Jesus needed to go and take that time. He couldn't just do, do, do. He had to go take that time. So there, there are a couple things I want to talk about because you minute, the prayer thing is one of them. But, I mean, wh- why does he need to pray? I mean, he is God himself. He has all the power he needs to do what he needs to do. Why does he need to pray, do you think? Or how would you answer that question? Um, well, because pray is also rest in a way. And he is, he is fully divine, but he is also fully human at the time. So he gets tired. He needs to be recharged. And I think he needs to connect with the Father. So the, the last thing. So. Yeah. The, 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 there, there is a hidden, faulty presumption in my question, Renee. Oh, <laughs> um, of course. The way I framed the question was, uh, you pray so that you can do stuff. Well, yeah, kind of, sometimes. But prayer is fundamentally about my relationship right. with, with God. Right. And Jesus is in relationship with the Father, and he wants to spend time with mm-hmm. the Father. Mm-hmm. He doesn't pray so that he can teach, preach, Right. He'll cast he can out already demons. do that. He can already do that. Yeah. He prays because he loves his father. Mm-hmm. God is love. Right. right. Um, so so that, that's one aspect. But the other, th- I, I love these 11 verses. Uh, right before this, Jesus had been in the synagogue. He's teaching. Um, and now we see him very clearly healing mm-hmm. uh, and casting out demons. Right. And I think this is something, I think when many of us as Christians, certainly Catholics, when we think about our Christian faith, when we think about what it means to be Catholic, what Catholicism is, what Christianity is, we kind of go to like the doctrines, the mm-hmm. bo- things we believe, mm-hmm. scripture and so on, which is of course true, but these are truths that we read in the catechism, that we read especially in scripture as well. Um, these are truths that liberate, that free yeah. us. Yeah. Um, and, and God desires to free us ultimately from sin, but he is showing um right here at the beginning of Mark's gospel, and he continues to show us through history that his there's real power at work in the proclamation of the gospel, not just to inform us, 
but to transform us and change us, healing us and setting us free from evil. Yeah, we all need to pray a little bit more to connect with our Lord. Thanks, Dr. B. You bet.